Rick is demonstrating outside shooting techniques for an older player cocking the ball around the forehead area. He is looking under the ball to sight the target. Shooters are made, not born. Rick was not born a shooter. He was taught the basic shooting techniques, which he is now demonstrating. Rick is showing proper footwork. His feet are underneath him for balance and power. His shooting foot is slightly ahead or even. He is jumping straight up for better balance and arc on the shot. He is starting the shot with a set hand position, ball in the shooting pocket. He is taking the ball straight up for proper arm alignment. Rick is lifting the ball with his jump and thrusting it at the top of the jump. He is thrusting the ball with fingers and wrists for proper follow through. This videotape is on great jump shooting techniques for players of all ages, both male and female. Coaches and players should understand that the basic shooting techniques are the same for players of all ages. Players who are shooting the basketball well are basically doing the same thing. They are using proper footwork, proper form, and proper timing. The two main differences are the lift of the elbow and the height of the jump. Some players jump a little ways off the floor, some players come up much higher. There's also a difference in the elbow lift. A young player usually uses a one-quarter lift. An older player will come up higher with the elbow lift, and then there are some players that use a three-quarter or even higher. So these are the two basic differences. There are differences in styles, but not basic techniques. There are three essentials that are needed to become a great shooter footwork, form, and timing. A player needs to do all three of these to become a great shooter. If a player is doing one or two, they might become a decent shooter, but not a great shooter. The first essential I'm going to cover is footwork. If a player uses proper footwork, he or she will be able to square easily to the basket. I'm going to show you the most common procedure. That's where the inside foot is put down first going both ways. For example, when a player goes right, he or she puts the inside foot down first and comes around with the outside foot to square to the basket. Going left, the player also puts the inside foot down first and comes around with the outside foot to square to the basket. Again, I'm showing you the most common procedure. There are other procedures, but this is the one that's most widely used. When a coach is teaching a player to square easily to the basket, he or she should start with the one-two stop. That's where the player puts one foot down and then the other. It's one-two. One-two. The other way to stop is with a jump stop, where both feet go down at the same time. Now, as you can see, you can do more things with your feet with a one-two stop. If you're forced into this position here, then you have to come around again, and that's a much slower move. So I'm recommending the one-two stop. One foot down, and then the other. It's also important now to have the correct stance. If the width of the feet are this far apart, that's too far. You want to have the power underneath the body. So your feet will be underneath the hips or the width of the shoulders. This way you'll have the power under the body. It's also important now to place the shooting foot properly. For a right-handed shooter, that is the right foot. For a left-handed shooter, that's the left foot. I'm going to show it for a right-handed shooter. All right, the shooting foot should be slightly ahead or even. If the foot is out here, this takes three to six feet away from the shot and it will also spin the player in the air. So in general, what you have now with the shooting foot slightly ahead or even, and you have the width, the feet underneath the hips or underneath the shoulder, you can follow a general rule, which is to have the feet underneath the body. Then the player won't go wrong. Now I'm going to have Rick show uh, squaring to the basket off of a one-two stop. That's 
It's one, two. He's bringing the outside foot around the square to the basket. Now I show it from the left side. He's putting the inside foot down first using a one, two stop. There are two guidelines that help a player square more easily to the basket. One is getting the inside foot started towards the basket, and the other is opening up in the shoulder some. If a player stays perfectly square to the baseline, coming down like this, and then pivots on the inside foot and comes around, that is a difficult square move. If the player opens up somewhat in the shoulders, and gets the inside foot started towards the basket, it's much easier to square to the basket. So if a player opens up in his shoulders a little bit, gets the inside foot started towards the basket, the player will square to the basket more easily. Rick is going to show squaring easily to the basket from a difficult angle on the floor where he's coming up from the baseline. He'll be following the two guidelines where he opens up in the shoulders and gets the inside foot started towards the basket. show it from the other side. Rick's using a one-two stop, getting the inside foot started towards the basket. As you can see he opened up in the shoulders. This makes it easy to square to the basket. I'm now going to show the common footwork mistakes going both right and left. One of the most common going to the right is where the player puts the inside foot down, brings the outside foot too far around, placing the shooting foot too far out in front. This takes away from distance. It also spins the player in the air and throws the player off balance. And it's a very common mistake, and to have the shooting foot out this far is definitely wrong. Another common mistake when going to the right is where the player uses the one-two stop and has the shooting foot too far behind. Now, if the player jumps up and squares in the air, this is proper. But if the player keeps this footwork position and goes up, then the player will be shooting across the body, and this is a bad mistake. There are two common mistakes going to the left. One of the most common is where the player comes down, uses a one-two stop, and does not pivot on the inside foot. This is a very common mistake for right-handed players going to their left. They do not pivot well on the inside foot. This forces them to push away uh, from the basketball and causes a poor shot. Another common mistake going left is where the player puts the outside foot too far around, which when the right-handed player is going to the left, this places the shooting foot behind, and the player shoots across the body, and this is wrong. The player wants to come down, put the inside foot down first, and square to the basket. The shooting foot will be slightly ahead or even. In executing basic fundamentals well, Players need to be balanced while doing the movement. There are three things that mainly affect balance. The position of the head, the position of the arms, and the position of the legs, and also when the player has the basketball, the position of the basketball. The head position is very important. When the player has the head here, in these different positions, the player is off balance. A common way to throw the player off balance is to bend at the waist. This is one of the most common. You can see now when I bend the knees, it puts the player back in balance. This is probably the most common mistake for throwing girls off balance. They bend too much at the waist. They need to bend more at the knees and set the tail. Now, the top should basically be over the bottom and all over the point of center of gravity on the body. On males, this is situated right here in the high stomach. The point of center of gravity is a little lower on women. It's around the stomach area. So if the top is basically over the bottom, like this, then the player is balanced. A balanced position with the top over the bottom is not with the back being rigid. This is incorrect. It's just in a comfortable position with the head basically over the bottom or the point of center of gravity. 
Another thing that throws players off balance is to overstride. If a player overstrides, a lot of times the hands or the arms and the head follows. And you can see from this position here, just a little bit this way, or a hand out in here will throw the player off balance. It's better for the players to take shorter, quicker strides and to keep the body collected, so to speak. This is the number one mistake of throwing a young players off balance, is to overstride. The player wants to take a shorter stride now and be more collected. Another thing now that throws a player off balance is when the hand gets too far out. See, if the hand goes out or the arm, the head sometimes follow. I'm in an off balance position here. I can be like this now, and this throws the player back on balance. So you have to be careful now where you have the arms and the legs. If it's overdone, the head follows a lot of times, and the player then is off balance. Let me have the basketball on, Rick. When you take an object of weight and bring it back to this point here, a player is balanced better. This is the point of center of gravity right here. And when you take an object of weight and bring it back to this area, the player is more balanced. The ball can take the player off balance. If the ball is held over here and the body is not with the basketball and the head's here, the player is off balance. As soon as I come here, I'm in a more balanced position. If I leave the basketball out here and I try to pass the basketball like that, uh, I'll be off balance. If I start at this point here and then come around and also my leg comes around, I'm in a more balanced position. When a person is dunking the basketball, the ball is brought back to center first and then the ball is dunked. So the ball basically, when you're pivoting around and making your different movements, wants to be worked with in a body area. As soon as you get over like this, the player is off balance. going to run the circle footwork drill. We're running this drill with two players, but it can be run with more players. In running this drill now, make sure that the players go behind the baseline. They'll start and stop on the whistle, so when they're stopping on the whistle, they'll be able to square to the basket. If they run underneath the basket when they're running this drill, it's too hard to square to the basket. So make sure in running this drill that your players run behind the baseline. This drill is run with the whistle. The players start and stop on the whistle. Put inside foot down first. Bring outside foot around to square to basket. Bend knees set tail for balance. Pivot on inside foot. Get inside foot started toward basket. Keep shooting foot even or slightly ahead. Pivot on inside foot. Bend knees, set tail for balance. Let's go to the left. Put inside foot down first. Bring outside foot around to square to basket. Pivot on inside foot. Bend knees, set tail for balance. Get inside foot started toward basket. Keep shooting foot even or slightly ahead. All right, we're going to the right this time, and we're going to step it up a little bit. Get inside foot started toward basket. Bend knees, set tail for balance. Pivot on inside foot. Let's go to the left and step it up. Get inside foot started towards the basket. Bend knees, set tail for balance. Pivot on the inside foot. The players have just shown the basic footwork techniques for going right and left. The simplified techniques of one, two, stop, inside foot down first, and feet basically under player are easy to learn. Another essential is form. 
the first step in developing correct form is for the player to place his or her hand on the basketball properly. Now I recommend the set hand position. The set hand position, the player will have a slight bent wrist and the hand and the wrist will be properly aligned. You can see from the front view, if the hand is like this and the wrist is here, it is not aligned properly. This aligns, the set hand position, aligns the hand and the wrist in the most natural way. Some mistakes now on the set hand position. If the wrist is bowed like this, it's very difficult to cock the ball well and time the shot easily. So you don't want to start with a bowed wrist because this is difficult to time. If the hand is on the side of the basketball, it's also hard to time the shot by using this type of hand placement because you have too much grip adjustment to cock the ball and the player will shoot on the way down and that affects the distance. Another mistake now is to have the hand on the center of the basketball so that the hand and the wrist are in this position here. When the ball is cocked, the elbow is out and the player will spray uh, the shot. The most common mistake now is to overcock the wrist in the very beginning of the shot. This causes a lot of stiffness. It places the player's hand too far under the basketball. And it, like I said, it's one of the most common mistakes. The player should have a slight bent wrist. That way, the wrist and the fingers are gotten into the shot much more easily. So again, this is one of the most common mistakes. You want just a slight bent wrist. In a set hand position, you also want to be able to see all the fingers here. If you can't see the index finger, this is not a set hand position. It's like this, where you can see it, all of the four fingers, and especially you should be able to see the index finger. This is wrong here. Now, the level is also important. On a set hand position, for a younger player that's looking over the basketball, the ball starts at the stomach level, slight bent wrist, the player cocks the ball to this position here where the player is looking over the basketball. This is a set hand position. For an older player now, I recommend starting higher in the pocket around the high stomach area or chest area. Now you can see this is also a set hand. Nothing has been changed here just starting higher in the pocket. I recommend this position here for an older player looking under the basketball when it's cocked. Again, all of these levels here now are a set hand position. Make sure that the player now has a slight bent wrist. This makes it much easier to cock the basketball and shoot the ball with the fingers and the wrist. Now Rick is showing a set hand position for a younger player starting the ball approximately at the stomach level. There's a slight bent wrist here. You can see all the fingers here, including the index finger. I cocked the ball to a one quarter lift. Now he's looking over the basketball, take it down again. So you can see he's starting at the stomach level, set hand position. From this position here to here, uh, this will be timed well because of the amount of lift here. Okay, go ahead and lift it up. All right, now start at the high stomach. Now he's showing the same thing, the set hand position, but he's starting at his higher level, and I recommend this for an older player. You have a slight bent wrist. Again, you can see the fingers here. The hand and the wrist are properly aligned in the most natural position. I right, take it up to a half lift. Now, from this level here to this level, it's easy to time with the amount of lift here. All right, take it down again. All right, now start even higher on a set hand, even a little bit more. Now, there are some people that even start this high as far as a set hand, but, but this is the same thing here, slight bent wrist. You can see the fingers, the hand, and the wrist are properly aligned. Take it up to a three-quarter now. Okay. All right, now bring it down again. All right, now show some of the basic levels starting at the bottom. There's a level, level, take it up a little bit more. All of those are set hand positions right there. And again now, you would not want the wrist overcocked in here. 
because take it down to this position here. If it's overcocked there or in this position, the player will put the hand too far under the basketball and they'll shoot a dead ball, an air ball, or one without any spin. Okay, take it down to the basic positions again. Set hand, take it up. Set hand, take it up. Set hand. I want to show a method that will help players get the set hand position. A player that is cocking the ball and looking over the basketball can put the arms up to this position here and just turn the shooting hand over slightly. Now from the side view you can still see the fingers here and there's a slight bent wrist. This is a set hand position. So the player can have the arms down here, just the arms are basically parallel or slightly up. Turn the hand over slightly, you still see the fingers here and there's a slight bent wrist. For an older player, you can raise the hands higher to the high shooting pocket area and all you have to do then is to turn the hand over slightly. What you see from the side is this. Turn the hand over slightly, you still see the fingers and there's a slight bent wrist. Now from these two positions, all the player has to do is lift and bend here. Now the player is looking over the basketball. Player that's starting in a higher shooting pocket Turn the hand over slightly. Just take the ball up and cock it. This procedure will help players get the set hand position easily. Both players are showing the set hand position. Rachel is showing a lower shooting pocket, but this is the set hand position. Slight bent wrist and you can see her fingers here. Uh, go ahead and cock the ball, Rachel. You can see now she's cocking up around the face area. All right, take it down again. Rick cocks the ball higher, but this is a set hand position, slight bent wrist. You can see the fingers here. Take it up, Rick. He takes it up to a higher lift. I bring it down. Both are showing the set hand position, but they're starting from a different level. Rachel and Rick will now show the set hand position shooting off the pass, off the dribble, and off the stationary position. Players are now showing the set hand shooting off the stationary position. are now showing the set hand shooting off the dribble. Players are now showing the set hand shooting off the pass. Rick is now going to show a ball pickup drill. He's going to be practicing on squaring to the basket properly and also getting a set hand position. He'll be doing this drill off of the dribble and also off of the ball toss out. See, he's squaring to the basket properly. He's picking the ball up with a set hand position. With the ball toss out drill, now he's doing the same thing, getting a set hand position, squaring to the basket properly. 
Since I've just covered the placement of the shooting hand, I'll now cover the placement of the balance hand. There are two main grips that are used. An intersecting grip, that's where the thumbs intersect, or a parallel grip, where the thumbs are parallel. Now you can see on the balance hand here that the hand is not underneath the basketball and the fingers are not underneath the basketball. This is definitely wrong to place the balance hand under the ball and the shooting hand on top because when the ball is raised, the player is real stiff through the shoulders and does not control the basketball well when the balance hand is underneath the basketball. Again, there is an intersecting grip and there's a parallel grip. Now, the wrist should be slightly in and the elbow slightly out. So it's important now that the wrist is in and the elbow is slightly out. Again, the two basic grips, you have an intersecting grip and you have a parallel grip where the thumbs are parallel. Rick is showing the correct placement of the balance hand. He has the hand on the side of the basketball. He's showing an intersecting grip. Now we'll show this from another position so that you can see it better. Uh, take the ball up and cock the basketball, Rick. Okay, you can see the position now of the balance hand. Take it down again. All right now, take it up again. Okay, turn around now and face the camera. You can see now that the hand is on the side of the basketball. That's the balance hand. I right, cock the basketball. And you can see now that the fingers are not under the basketball. Go ahead and show the parallel grip. I right, cock the basketball. You can see the little finger there is slightly under, but the hand is not under the basketball. Go ahead and show it with the hand underneath the basketball to start with. I right, cock the basketball. See, it bows the wrist, it tightens the shoulder, and this is definitely wrong. Rick is showing an intersecting grip where the two thumbs are intersecting. Now show a parallel grip. You can see the two thumbs now are parallel. And hand is basically, the balance hand is basically on the side of the basketball. I'll show the intersecting again. This is the most common grip. There are many more players that use this grip than the parallel grip. Show the parallel grip again. is now going to show a ball pickup drill. He's working on squaring to the target and placing his balance hand correctly on the basketball. He uses an intersecting grip. He's picking the ball properly up off the dribble. Now show this drill, the ball toss out drill. Squaring properly the basket with a one-two stop. He's working on placing his balance hand properly and squaring correctly at the same time. The second step in developing correct form is starting the shot in the shooting pocket. Now the shooting pocket area is basically in the center of the body. Technically it's a little right for a right-handed shooter. Now the level varies. You can start here and it can come up into this area. This is the shooting pocket area here as far as levels. Now, when you bring the ball to the shooting pocket area, you put it in the shot line. All the player has to do is raise the ball and the arm is aligned properly. It's also from this position here for a younger shooter to take the ball up here. It's easy to time. An older shooter starting here and taking it up here, it's easy to time. And also by bringing the ball into this position, the player is balanced better. So it's very important now to bring the ball into the shooting pocket area. Now, for younger shooters, starting at the stomach level, this is the shooting pocket down here for a younger player. He or she will take the ball up to this position where they're looking over the basketball. The shooting pocket for an older player, we recommend a higher position around the high stomach area, low chest area. All they have to do then is take the ball up where they're looking under it and it's easy to time taking it from this position up to this position here. So again, we recommend now for a younger player to start at this level 
For an older player, we recommend that they start at this level here. The shooting pockets will vary for different individuals. Now I'll have Rick show this with the basketball. Now Rick's showing in the beginning here, he's showing it at the stomach level. I take the basketball up to one quarter lift. He has a one quarter elbow lift here. He's looking over the basketball. This is for a younger player. Now turn sideways and we'll show that again. Shooting pocket, he's starting at the stomach level here. I take the basketball up. He's looking over the basketball. He has a one quarter elbow lift. I turn around and face again. All right, now start higher on a higher shooting pocket. We recommend a higher shooting pocket for an older player. Starting from this level here now, when they take the basketball up to this position, they'll time it easily. I right, take it up. You can see now he's in a one-half elbow lift here. He's looking underneath the basketball now. I right, turn sideways. See, starting in a higher shooting pocket level for an older shooter looking underneath the basketball. I right, take it up. You can see he's looking underneath the basketball. He's in about a one-half elbow lift there. All right, come back around. All right, now, I'm going to have him show just a second in jamming the basketball. There are two common mistakes when players bring the ball to the shooting pocket area. When they bring the ball too tight to the body, they jam the shoulders. And this is one of the common mistakes you actually want to have a little space in between the basketball and the body. You don't want to jam tight to the body. Turn sideways and show that. Now lift the ball straight up. See, it jams this way. All right, turn around again. This is a very common mistake for people bringing the ball to the shooting pocket. All right, now bring it up. And that jams. The second mistake is not to bring it in far enough and to leave it out here. This leaves the arms out in front. You'll shoot a flat shot and usually the ball is swung up and then thrown out. I right, uh, turn sideways to show that. Okay, now take the ball up. Okay, now take it down. Okay, those are the two common mistakes, bringing the ball uh, to the shooting pocket area. Again, by just bringing it to the shooting pocket area, you pick up proper alignment in there. Uh, by bringing it to this area, it's easier to time, and the player will be balanced better by bringing the ball into this position here. Rachel and Rick will now show the shooting pocket area. Rick has a higher shooting pocket. He starts around the high stomach, low chest area. I'd lift the ball. He's lifted to the cock position, and you can see now he's looking under the ball to sight the target. I bring it down again. So he has a higher pocket area than Rachel. Rachel's starting around the stomach area a little, or a little higher. I right, now lift the ball and cock it. And you can see now she's looking over the basketball to sight the target. I right, bring it down. Now you can see she's starting lower. She has a lower shooting pocket than Rick. Rick is able to time the shot real well because he's starting from this position here and taking it up to the forehead area. Actually, the amount of lift will be about the same, but the players are starting at a different level and taking the ball to a different level. Now Rick and Rachel will show the shooting pocket area, shooting off the pass, off the dribble, and off the stationary position. are starting the shot in the shooting pocket area while shooting the stationary jump shot. Players are bringing the ball to the shooting pocket area while shooting off the dribble.
players are bringing the ball to the shooting pocket area while shooting off the pass. There's a common mistake made shooting off of the pass. And that is if you follow where you catch it, you shoot it. Now, if you catch it in the shooting pocket area and take it straight up, this is correct. But if you catch it outside, you should bring it back to the shooting pocket area because it picks up the all important shot line. So if you catch the ball out here, you must bring it in here to pick up the shot line and then take it straight up. If you catch the ball here and take it straight up, you're trying to find the shot line and this is incorrect. So it's much easier to bring the ball back to the shooting pocket area and automatically pick up the shot line. Now Rick will show this shooting off of the pass. Rick is bringing the ball into the shooting pocket area, which is a little right of center. From the shooting pocket area, all Rick has to do is take the ball straight up to align the arm properly. Bring the ball into the shooting pocket, lift ball straight up. Bring in lift. Bring in lift. The third step in developing correct form is positioning the shooting arm correctly. This is aligning the arm correctly. Player starts with a set hand, ball in the shooting pocket area. All the player has to do is take the ball straight up. When a player takes the ball straight up, he positions the arm correctly. You can see there's a slight slant to the arm. A younger player cocking the ball around the cheek chin area, you can see there's a slight slant to the arm here. The index finger's in line with the cheek chin area, the elbow's in line with the foot. Player takes the ball up higher and is sighting the target by looking under the ball. There's a slight slant to the arm. Index finger's in line with the outer half of the eyebrow. The elbow's in line with the foot. It's incorrect now to line the arm straight up and down and have it positioned in line with the shoulder. This is incorrect. It's also incorrect to have the ball start over here and then have to come back and find the shot line. This is incorrect. Now I'll have Rick show these things with the basketball. All right, now Rick's showing a set hand position. The ball is in the shooting pocket area. The shooting pocket is a little right of center. Uh, basically, it's in the center, but technically, it's a little right. Now, all Rick has to do is take the ball straight up. All right, take it straight up. Now, you can see there's a slight slant to the arm here. Uh, his elbow's in line with the foot. The index finger's in line with the outer half of the eyebrow. I right, now cock the ball for a younger player. Okay, now you can see the, there's still a slight slant to the arm, elbows in line with the shooting foot, index fingers in line with the cheek chin area. Now align it incorrectly over the shoulder. Now you can see the arm's more straight up and down and there's more throwing action when it's in, li in line with the shoulder. This is incorrect. Take the ball over to the side of the head. And you can see when it's aligned over here, he'll then have to bring it back into the shot line, and this is incorrect. All right, now, an important guideline is to take the ball straight up. You start with a set hand. The ball is basically starts in the center of the body. Technically, it's a little right of center. So when you take it up, you would be taking it up a little right of center. This takes the index finger up through the eyebrow area, or if you're cocking the ball for a younger player, it takes it up through the uh, outer part of the chin or the cheek area through here. It's important now to take the ball straight up so that the ball starts in the shot line and stays in the shot line. This is very important. All right, let me have Rick show that. You can see now he has a set hand position. 
Uh, the ball's in the shooting pocket, and you can see it's a little right of center, and he will take it up the same way. All right, take it straight up. See, this is a good guideline, taking it straight up. His index finger then is in line with the outer half, the eyebrow, elbows in line with the foot. I right, take it down again. Now see, technically he's taking the uh, ball straight up and that puts the index finger up through the eyebrow area. All right, go ahead. All right, that's good. All right, take it down. All right, now turn sideways. Another important guideline now is when the player takes the basketball up to the cock position, the ball should be taken up close to the head area. That's the chin area or the face area, forehead area slightly over, wherever the player cocks the basketball. But it's very important to take the ball close. When the, a player takes the ball close, then when the ball is thrusted, there's a correct angle of release there, and the player will have arc on the shot. All right, go ahead and take that up. Now you can see he's taking it up, and it's close to the forehead area. All right, take it down. All right, now cock the ball for a younger player. Now you can see that uh, it's, it's still close here, but he has a one-quarter lift here. All right, take it down again. Uh, cock it in about three different positions, bringing it close to the head. As you can see, if the player follows basic form techniques, he or she will automatically position the arm correctly. Okay, take the arm. Now you can see he's cocked the ball close to the forehead area. By taking it straight up and cocking it here, he has automatically formed these parts correctly. Now when he thrusts the ball, there'll be the correct angle of release. He'll have good arc on the shot. If you would see this arm alignment from the front, you would see that the ball would end up going straight. So you can see it's actually easy to develop form if a player follows the basic form techniques. That's set hand, ball in the shooting pocket area, then if the player takes the ball straight up and cocks it by the head area, that's the chin, face, or forehead area, or slightly above, wherever the player cocks the basketball, now he or she will automatically have correct form. So again, it's very simple to develop correct form. Set hand, ball in the shooting pocket, take it straight up close to the head area. Players are showing taking the ball straight up for correct arm alignment. They're showing this off the stationary jump shot. they're showing taking the ball straight up, shooting off the dribble. Now they're showing taking the ball straight up, shooting off the pass. Cocking the ball close to the head or forehead area for correct arm position. Players have just shown the three basic techniques for developing correct form. With these three simplified techniques, it is easy for players to learn correct form for shooting off pass, off dribble, and off the stationary position. Rick is going to show the alignment drill. Now this drill is done without jumping. It's much easier to develop form without jumping. Once you develop the form without jumping, then you can take this form and put it into a jump shot and the habits will automatically transfer to the jump shot. Now when you start this drill, it's best to be one or two steps in from the free throw area. Rick is in one step. 
Now the ball starts in the shooting pocket area. Uh, he has a set hand position. Now the timing key for this drill would be to lift the ball and bend the knees at the same time. So the player to start the timing correctly will lift and bend at the same time. All right, go ahead and show that, Rick. So he's lifting the ball, bending the knees at the same time. All right, now, the guidelines for this alignment drill, when he cocks the basketball, and this is for an older player looking under the basketball, he'll lift the ball straight up, go ahead. The index finger now is in line with the outer half of the eyebrow, and the elbow's in line with the foot. All right, take that down. The timing key now is lift the ball and bend the knees at the same time, same speed. And the alignment guidelines, the index finger is in line with the outer half of the eyebrow and the elbow is in line with the foot. Show that without the basketball. All right, take it up. Now you can see the index finger is in line with the outer half of the eyebrow, the elbow is in line with the foot. All right, go ahead and shoot a couple. The player now is working on the alignment of the arm. Index finger in line with the outer half of the eyebrow, elbow in line with the foot. Starting with set hand position, ball in the shooting pocket area. He takes the ball straight up close to the forehead area. Rick is showing this alignment drill from a side view and he's going to show cocking the basketball. Now technically you don't cock the basketball, you cock the hand and the wrist. All right, go ahead and take it up. All right, now you can see that he's cocked the basketball close to the uh, forehead area. You can see his hand and fingers now are parallel with the floor. Take it up just a little bit. All right, now he has the fingers up a little bit. This is also correct. All right, now take the fingers too deep. Take the ball up higher. And see, he's dropped the fingers here, and this is a common mistake. Right now, it'll be very hard to control the basketball, and this is incorrect. All right, take it down again. All right, now cock the basketball. All right, now he's at a parallel, and this is correct. Take it slightly up, and that's also correct. Now show a no-wrist cock. Some players will do a no-wrist cock. That's this position right here, and some players that use this technique uh, shoot the ball well. If a player is shooting well and using this technique, uh, go ahead and go with it. I wouldn't recommend teaching this to a lot of players. Again, the two recommended positions, show those again, the parallel and slightly up. Okay, now bring the ball down. All right, now the next thing I want to show from the side view is the stable base. All right. Cock the ball to a one-quarter position. You can see this is a stable base here now. Now take it up to a half. That's a stable base. Now take it up to, okay. Now for accuracy, a player has to have a stable base. If a player just comes right straight up through this way with no stable base, the player will fling the basketball and not have accuracy. It's very important now to have a stable base for accuracy. All right, go ahead and shoot a few shots. You can see Rick's wrist is parallel to the floor. He uses that particular technique. He takes the ball straight up. He cocks the ball close to the forehead area. And you can see he has a stable base on this. We're now going to show a mass alignment drill. We'll show this with two players, but it can be run with more players. Now the players can square up to the coach or they can square up to the target. All right, square up to the target. Have your shooting foot even or slightly ahead. Now we'll show this first for a younger player. We'll start at the stomach level. Got a set hand position, ball in the shooting pocket. 
We're going to take it to a one-quarter lift. All right, lift and bend. Get your elbow in line with the shooting foot, index finger, cheek, chin area. I right, bring it down. I right, lift and bend. Elbow in line with the shooting foot, index finger, cheek, chin area. You can see the players are looking over the basketball. This is for a player looking over the basketball or a younger player. I right, bring it down. We're starting at the stomach level, set hand position, lift and bend, elbow in line with the shooting foot, index finger, cheek, chin area. I right, bring it down. All right, now we're going to start at the high stomach level. It's a higher shooting pocket. When we cock the basketball this time, we'll be looking under the basketball for an older player or a player that uses this technique. I'd right, lift and bend. Elbow is in line with shooting foot, index finger, outer half of the eyebrow. I right, bring it down. You're starting at the high stomach area. I right, lift and bend. You're looking under the basketball to sight the target. Elbow in line with the shooting foot, index finger in line with the outer half of the eyebrow. I bring it down. Lift and bend. Elbow in line with the shooting foot, index finger, outer half of the eyebrow. Okay, bring it down. Rick is going to show the alignment drill for a younger player. He's going to show a one-quarter lift. That's where he's looking over the basketball when it's cocked. Now this drill should be run two steps in for the younger player, and there is no jumping with this drill. Now once the player develops this, then these habits will transfer to the jump shot, where the player's lifting the elbow to a one-quarter lift. Now we'll show this later. All right, Rick, go ahead and cock the basketball to a one-quarter lift. Okay, now, the guidelines here, the elbow is in line with the shooting foot, the index finger is in line with the cheek-chin area. Let me take the ball, all right, take it down now. Index finger is in line with the cheek-chin area, elbow is in line with the foot, all right. Now, the timing key is the same. He's lifting and bending the knees at the same time, same speed. So he lifts the ball and bends the knees. Now, later on, as an older player, all the player will have to do will be to cock the basketball higher later on. See, as a younger player, let's say the ball is cocked right here. Then as an older player, the player just takes it up a little farther and cocks the basketball around the forehead area and looks underneath the basketball to sight the target. So these habits transfer very well to later on. All right, go ahead and shoot a couple. Now he's working on aligning the index finger with the cheek chin area, and he's getting his elbow in line with the shooting foot. You can see he's looking over the basketball when it's cocked. These are techniques for a younger player. taking the ball straight up and cocking it close to the chin cheek area. Rick is showing the one quarter lift from the side view. Okay, lift the ball. Okay, now you can see that the hand and wrist are cocked properly here. Uh, the elbow's in line with the shooting foot. You can see he has a one quarter lift. Uh, from this position here, uh, when he pushes up and thrusts the basketball, he'll have good arc on the shot and his ball will be aligned properly to the basket. I right, go ahead and show a few shots. He's lifting the ball and bending the knees at the same time and he pushes up and thrusts at the same time. So he has a good stable base with a one quarter lift. The ball's cocked, technically now the Hand and wrist are cocked. Now he's working on alignment there. Index fingers in line with the cheek chin area. 
elbows in line with the shooting foot. These habits now will transfer to his jump shot. Rick is demonstrating correct jump shooting techniques for a young player using a one-quarter elbow lift. He starts with set hand, ball in the shooting pocket, he's taking the ball straight up for proper alignment. His feet are basically underneath him for balance and power. He is lifting the ball with the jump, he is thrusting the ball at the top of the jump or slightly before. Rachel is working on her form while shooting a stationary jump shot. She starts with a set hand, ball in the shooting pocket. She is taking the ball straight up for correct arm alignment. She cocks the ball close to the face area so the arm is automatically positioned correctly. Set hand, ball in the shooting pocket. She takes the ball straight up for correct arm alignment. cover two of the three main essentials, footwork and form. Now I'm going to cover the third essential, which is timing. There are two parts to timing, lifting the ball and thrusting the ball. There are two parts with no conscious pause. When the player does it correctly, he or she will lift the ball but will not pause at this particular part and then thrust the basketball. If a player literally follows one piece shooting, this will be incorrect because the player will be coming right straight up with the shot and there will be no stable base and this is wrong. Players need to learn how to time the upper body movements with the lower body movements to become good shooters. The first part of timing is lifting the ball correctly. More mistakes are made in the beginning of the shot than any other part of the shot. If a player starts with a set hand, ball in the shooting pocket, lifts the ball and bend the knees at the same time and then jumps up and shoots, this is incorrect. It's a slow way of shooting. It's not what's called a power jump shot. A power jump shot, the player starts with a set hand, ball in the shooting pocket, and when the knees are first starting to bend, the player will leave the ball basically in the shooting pocket area. For example, See, the player does not lift the ball right away. This way, the player is able to lift the ball with a jump, which is correct. Now, I'll show this. You can see in the beginning now, as the knees are first starting to bend, I leave the ball in the shooting pocket area. Now, there are timing keys that set this up correctly. For a stationary jump shot, player can have the shooting foot slightly back ball in the shooting pocket area with a set hand. Now, when the foot starts down and the knees start to bend, the player then will lift the ball with the jump. For example, a timing key now for shooting off the pass. When the player brings the ball in, the knees are bending at the same time, then the player will be able to lift the ball with the jump. For example, the ball toss out drill, you can see the ball is brought in, the knees are bending, and this way the player is able to lift the ball with the jump. Now off of the dribble, the timing key is the same, it's bringing the ball in, bending the knees at the same time. For example, as I bounce the ball and bring the ball in, you can see the knees are starting to bend. This way I'm able to lift the ball with the jump. Now I'll have Rick show how to lift the ball correctly. Rick is demonstrating lifting the ball at the correct time while shooting a stationary jump shot. Rick is lifting the ball with the jump. Timing keys to help set this up are put the foot down jump, put the foot down pop up, Put the foot down, lift ball. Put 
put the foot down lift. Put the foot down jump. Now Rick will show putting the ball with the knee bend to set up correct timing. If the ball is positioned over here in the beginning, then the player must bring the ball back to the shooting pocket area and put it with the knee bend to set up correct timing. It's the same way from a low ball position. The ball should be brought back to this position here with the knee bend to set up correct timing. With the ball overhead, like this, it would be brought back to this position to set up correct timing. You're putting the ball with the knee bend, so to speak. This sets up correct timing. Rick is showing bringing the ball into the shooting pocket from different starting positions. Rick will show how to set up correct timing in the beginning, shooting off of the pass and off of the dribble. When he gets the ball off of the pass, he'll be bringing the ball into the shooting pocket area and setting it up with the knee bend. When he shoots off of the dribble, he'll be doing the same thing. He'll be putting it with the knee bend to start the shot correctly. Rick is now showing how to time the start of the shot off the pass. You'll see now that Rick is bringing in the ball and bending the knees at the same time. Bring it in and bend. is now showing how to time the start of the shot off the dribble. He is bringing the ball into the shooting pocket area and bending the knees at the same time. Bring ball in, bend knees. Bring in Ben. Two common timing mistakes are too long a lift and too short a lift. This is where the player starts the basketball here and lifts the ball to this height here. This is too long a lift. Another mistake is where a player, say, starts the basketball here and only lifts this high. Now, starting low and taking the ball up high is one of the most common mistakes. If a player starts the shot at the stomach level, the player should cock the ball around the chin face area. If the player starts at the stomach and, and takes it higher, this is too long a lift. Now, it's also wrong if the player starts the shot here and then lifts just a short distance. If the player only lifts this far, the player does not give himself or herself enough time to get the legs in the shot, and also there's no stable base established. So where a player starts here and takes it up here is definitely wrong. Now, if a player starts the shot around the high stomach area, to time the shot correctly, the player should take the ball up to the forehead or slightly above the forehead area. If the player starts the shot lower in the stomach area, then the player should lift the ball to the chin face area. 
These are both very common timing mistakes. The second part of timing is thrusting the ball at the correct time. The ball should be thrusted at the top of the jump or just slightly before the top of the jump. There are two common mistakes in thrusting the basketball. One is thrusting the ball too soon and one is thrusting the ball too late. If the player thrusts the ball too soon, the player will fling the basketball and not have a stable base. If the player thrusts the basketball too late, the player will go up and hang and then thrust the ball late and then the player will be coming down on the shot and the player will take the legs out of the shot. Now I'll have Rick show these two common mistakes. Rick is showing thrusting the ball too soon. He is flinging the basketball and has no stable base. A stable base is needed for accuracy. Rick is showing thrusting the ball too late. By thrusting the ball too late, he is shooting on the way down, and this takes the leg power out of the shot. Rick is thrusting the ball on the way down. two timing keys that will help players thrust the ball at the correct time. One is pop up and get the ball going. The other is lift thrust. Now remember there are two parts to the shot with no conscious pause. So you want the player to pop up and get the ball going. Again there are two parts. There's the lifting and the thrusting but there's no conscious pause. So pop up and get the ball going will help a lot of players thrust the ball at the right time. Now if a player is having a hard time of releasing the ball at the right time or where a player is hanging too long and thrusting it late, lift thrust will help. The player can follow lift thrust and he or she will release the ball at the correct time. It's lift thrust, not lift and thrust. There's only two parts to it, lift thrust. Now I'll have Rick show these two timing keys. Rick is demonstrating thrusting the ball at the correct time while shooting a stationary jump shot. Timing keys are pop up and get the ball going, pop up and get the ball going, another timing key, lift thrust, lift thrust, It is very important that the players properly time the lifting of the ball with the jump and then properly time the thrusting the ball at the top of the jump or slightly before. These timing habits are easily developed through timing keys. It's easier to develop timing without the basketball. So we're going to show a drill where the players will be shadow shooting. It's a mass timing drill. We're going to show it with two players, but it can be run with more players. Okay, square up to the target. Get a set hand position, put the ball in the shooting pocket. Now you want to go all the way through the shot, put the foot down and lift, put the foot down and lift. Now you're going to put the foot down and lift the ball. Put the foot down and lift. Put the foot down and pop up. Put the foot down and jump. Put the foot down and jump. Put the foot down and lift. 
These are all timing phrases to start the shot correctly, to get the correct timing. Put the foot down and lift. All right, now we're going to work more on the release. This time you'll put the foot down and you're going to pop up and get the ball going. All right, put your foot down, pop up and get the ball going. All right, put the foot down, pop up and get the ball going. All right, do three or four on your own. Now they're putting the foot down and they're popping up and getting the ball going. All right, hold up. I've used the term pop up and get the ball going for a long time and it's been very good in teaching players to release the ball at the right time. If a player is still having trouble, you can use the phrase lift thrust. Now this is two counts, it's not lift and thrust, it's lift thrust. Set hand position, ball in the shooting pocket. Now when you put the foot down, then you lift the ball and lift thrust. All right, put the foot down and lift thrust. Put the foot down and lift thrust. Now if they're still shooting a little late, they need to step the lift thrust up. All right, put the foot down and lift thrust. Put the foot down and lift thrust. When thrusting the ball, a player should follow through with fingers and wrist. By shooting with the fingers and wrist, a player automatically creates correct follow through. By following through to the target area, a player automatically helps coordinate the body parts toward the target for better accuracy. is first developing form, it is good after thrusting the ball to hold the follow through position for a one count. This helps create the correct angle of release for proper arc and in turn better accuracy. Great shooters are made not born. Rachel is demonstrating basic shooting techniques which have been shown and explained throughout this tape. Rachel cocks the ball around the face area. If the basic techniques for footwork, form, and timing are done correctly, a player of average size and strength can shoot easily from 18 to 22 feet. Rachel is using correct jump shooting techniques. Her feet are underneath her. She starts with a set hand, ball in the pocket. She lifts ball straight up for proper arm alignment. She times the shot properly by lifting the ball with the jump and thrusts the ball at the top of the jump. Rachel thrusts the ball with the fingers and wrists for correct follow through. Simplified footwork techniques, one, two stop, inside foot down first, feet underneath player are easy to learn. The more I study shooting, the more I realize how important it is to have proper footwork. The shot starts with the footwork. The one, two stop fits jump shooting real well the inside foot down first is the most common and natural footwork procedure. By keeping the feet underneath the player, the player will be better balanced, have greater distance, and hold the shot line better. With these simplified form techniques, set hand, shooting pocket, and taking the ball straight up, correct form is easy to develop. Set hand is the most efficient and natural way to use the shooting hand. Shooting pocket sets up timing, balance, and puts the ball in the correct shot line. Taking the ball straight up makes it easy to align the arm properly and keep the ball in the shot line. By following the timing keys, it is easy to learn how to properly lift the ball with the jump and how to properly thrust it at the top of the jump or slightly before. For quick shooting and long range shooting, a player must learn to lift the ball at the proper time and thrust the ball at the proper time. Again, these are easily developed through timing keys. For 
information about other shooting materials, write Dick Baumgartner, 549 Meadowbrook Lane, Richmond, Indiana, 47374, or phone area code 317-966-4994.